Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. I've had the pleasure of interviewing a couple of gentlemen and ladies that are involved in the fashion business. And it's been, you know, I think an interesting discussion because fashion probably more than anything has been challenged uh, uh, during COVID-19, probably along with retail stores, uh, small retail stores and restaurants. And uh, I thought it would be really interesting to check in with uh, someone that uh, is really a Canadian uh, expert uh, in this regard. And uh, his name is uh, Roger Lamaru or Roger Lamaru. Um, uh, I tried to do that to both ways if I could. Uh, he's an articulate and highly accomplished influential fashion leader with over 40 years of experience, is passionate about designing and selecting timeless fashions for any lifestyle. Ro uh, Roger has held senior positions in prestigious companies. He's been instrumental in ensuring sustainability, ethical sourcing, and inclusive inclusivity as top of mind when designing or selecting the line. His strong leadership coaching and strategic skills drive and tenacity are what makes him a highly regarded trailblazer in the industry. Pretty impressive uh, background. Roger, how'd you get involved in the fashion business? Oh, I got involved. Actually, my mother was a um, pattern maker, seamstress and tailor, which are different, the seamstress versus tailor. She loved the garments. And then we were brought up way back, well, I was born in the 60s, 50s, 60s, my brothers and sisters. And then all, there wasn't a lot of money around, so mom could make anything out of anything. So if there was an old coat that she didn't need, she would take it apart and tailor three more coats for the kids in wool, wool coats and stuff. So I always watched my mother make things. So she was always into it. So I was really interested. So the, the ironic part of that is I have five other siblings and they all went into the financial field. But so I have the ac financial acumen as well, which is great for business, but I always wanted to get and stay within the fashion. So I did. So again, the first job I got was with Sears Canada in the buying teams. So working in buying and stuff. And I was fortunate enough to travel the world get more uh, fine tuned my technical designs, knowing the patterns. I've worked on quality control. I've worked in ethical sourcing overseas. So I've been able to tap into the full, from conception to the consumer, what we need to do in working in the retails. So once I decided to leave Sears, um, Williamson Dickies, Williamson Dickies is the workwear company. They're from Fort Worth, Texas. They had come into Canada and they were struggling. They didn't, they were tagging and piggybacking onto Big Brother in the States, which didn't make them very cost effective being a wholesaler. They were looking for somebody that was fully rounded that could take and build a merchandise team here in Canada and do the sourcing. And with my background through Sears, and I had been at Sears for almost 28 years at that time, um, word of mouth in the industry recommended I meet with them. Then I did, and I was hired to run their merchandising and sourcing division. Canada so whereas when I started there were about 15% going direct and making their own garments we by the time I left that company there were 85% overseas direct making their own manufacturing built a full team why I left there just to give me a quick overview Walmart Canada decided to relaunch George into Canada back in um, 2010 so Walmart for about a year kept coming after me too because I knew at the time the senior VP of the fashion, footwear, and accessory area knew me and knew my skills, needed a strong leader there to help with the technical and building and getting a whole line together. They came after me and persuaded, persuaded me to join them. So I was a uh, director of product development for a lot of the ladies uh, specialty, all the men's, some kids specialty, but I was also in charge of all the quality control for Canada within all the apparel, as well as uh, running the technical side. So I really got there, we cleaned it up and they, set them up for great sustainable growth by the time I left there. So I was very fortunate there. From there, I started doing a little consulting, took some time because I was always helping and guiding people within the fashion students, networking, helping them link and find their own way. While doing that, I was approached to take on a fill in a maternity contract. Actually, I worked with uh, Blue Notes, which is the YM group and went and filled and helped run their women's division, ladies teams division. Uh, from there, I was approached by um, TSC, Today's Shopping Choice, the shopping channel, the Rogers Media family, and I worked there for a while as well, running all the fashion and jewelry for them as well. From there on, so now I'm just consulting and working with a lot of teams and the FGI and the mogul, city moguls and all that. So What a fascinating career. Yeah. What's FGI? The uh, Fashion Institute. Of, so Claudia... Capelbo, Roger Ginrich, they run it. It's, yeah. a, it's bringing fashion to the surface within the, the global. It's a global 
they're all over and there's a Toronto division, which I'm part of with Claudia. So I work with them and I'll help mentor when they need me. Excellent. And uh, is that primarily for existing uh, people within the fashion business or people that want to get into the fashion business? Both. It's actually for both. Anybody can join FGI. Um, it's, there's an annual fee, which isn't that, that much. And um, it just connects you with the right people and mentors as myself. And we help guide and coach you. And there's a lot of, with the day and time and times of today, a lot of virtual meetings and some seminars. And it's excellent for anybody wanting to get into fashion or even considering fashion or looking for guidance on how to source or looking for guidance on where to get fabrics. Uh, there's also the apparel textile uh, shows that come to Canada. They're global. They're great. But they go to Copenhagen, Canada, Toronto. So I've been a speaker there as well. Um, they're virtual now because of the COVID, but that's another area and avenue where people that want to get into fashion, not sure where to go, can get help and connections. We're chatting tonight with uh, Roger Lamaru about uh, fashion. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back, and I'm going to ask him about the impact of COVID-19, what he thinks about uh, Canadian fashion, etc. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour. We're chatting with a uh, fashion industry um, executive and uh, an and expert, really, uh, Roger uh, Lemaru, who uh, has worked with Sears, worked with Walmart, worked with uh, numerous different other companies, uh, and uh, now with uh, FGI, which is a, uh, a group that uh, bring the fashion industry together and consulting to different uh, fashion, uh, fashion people, fashion companies, uh, fashion brands, et cetera. Roger, COVID-19. How has it impacted the fashion business? It's hugely impacted because, well, nobody, everybody's locked down, all these lockdowns. You're not having all the big fashion events. You're not getting an in-person networking, the reactions from a fashion show. So it's, it's getting tougher for the small independents as well as the big department stores that had to shut down as well. So the biggest impact there is a lot of the luxury fashions, luxury clothing. People are really reassessing what they really need. So working at home, as an example, uh, people say a lot of the sweats, it's not necessarily the sweats, but it's lounge comfort wear. They're thinking more of the comfort, the longevity and quality. Um, so where you've always had fast fashion for a lot of people that like to get out there and look their best and go to work. Now it's not really the fast fashion. They, you probably heard the term slow fashion. And what the slow fashion, the difference there is like within the slow fashion really takes into account the sustainability ethnical sourcing, like in uh, right wages, right places to work and the, the atmosphere, as well as the right long lasting clothing. It cannot, the, in the, within the long lasting, what's evolved during the COVID is a lot of the recycled clothing. So there's the people, mom and pop shops, not necessarily open anymore, but now online you can get um, vintage clothing. There's more and more that have been even opening during the COVID and all that's part of this slower fashion and recycling and getting it out there. Really, so you're almost suggesting that there's some positives to the fashion business from COVID-19, this there's, slow fashion. There's some negatives. There's a, definitely some positives. And part of the positives are, are exactly that, the, the uh, slow fashion coming on board. But also part of the positive is people really assessing what they really need. So there's not as much waste. You're not going to get out there and spend as much as well. But another one of the positives is people becoming more creative. So in a designer, like I said, you're not getting all these big fashion shows. You're not getting all this networking. But what they're doing is reducing their lines. They're really focusing and focusing not only on what they stood for before, but now they're really knowing who their true customer, what the true customer they're going after is. So they can narrow down the true key pieces too. Um, the part of, part of the miss, the negative on that too, is when you're showcasing visually on a virtual meeting, you're not getting the reactions. You're not getting the oohs and ahs, we'll call it, unless you're doing a Zoom where you can interact, smaller little crowds, but they become creative. And I'll use um, Christopher Bates. He's a Canadian designer, luxury men's. He uh, actually opened up a, his own little mini runway show in the Eaton Center. So when it locked, total lockdown, it can't. But now when it opens up again, or read now, you can do by invitation only, a guest at a time. And then he does mini shows and focus. So people are getting more creative too. It gets those juices flowing even more. What do you think is going to happen to, you know, Canadian fashion brands, to, uh, to the local uh, fashion stores along uh, Queen Street or King Street or in the Eaton Centre? Um, are people going to buy everything online and, and we're going to see the death of Canadian fashion retailing? 
No, and we don't know when it's fully going to open up again, but I, you'll never, ever see the death of it. People like to go in and try on and, and go into stores and interact and meet the designers, or there's, there's shops that only carry certain designers. They'll always be there. And I actually have a couple of friends, and I won't name them yet because they're just setting up, but they're just opening it shop on Queen Street West and it's going to be just designer clothing only so people are still taking that risk but they want to focus because there is that customer you'll always have like I said the fa slow fashion is there the luxury fashion is not all as as important because people are staying home but there's always that person that's going to want to dress up there's always that person that are used to certain brands there's always that person that want to go into the store so it, it's slower it's definitely some of them will close but the the more challenge, the biggest challenge there is being creative and how to survive. And uh, some of them will survive, definitely. Have uh, they all had to have uh, established online presences? And is that one of the recommendations you would make to them? That's one of the first recommendations I would make even prior to COVID, like when I would talk at a um, seminar for students or people wanting to get started, even to find out who your real true customer is, start online. The, the online shopping is the easiest now see where the interest is, get some feedback, do some surveys online, always online, I've always recommended, now more so than ever, definitely more so than ever. It keeps that for, and it broadens that for, it's not just for the Western or North America, it can broaden it globally, you can get over, get down to Mexico, go over to Europe, get into the UK, so definitely online presence. You've worked with Sears, you've worked yes. with Walmart, um, so some big, uh, some big multinational chains, um, companies, um, with economies of scale, with the influence of American culture, with, uh, with uh, sourcing from abroad, is there a future for a small Canadian fashion designer or manufacturer? Yes, yes, there is. And the reason being so, uh, you're right, there's always, there's always going to be some big ones. You're going to have the Amazons coming into play. You've got all these people with the big box um, mentality, but they're just from source right to consumer now, but you're always, the, the little guys will still be wanted. What their big key importance is, is stick to who you are, make sure that you're offering, you, you um, talk the talk, walk the talk, meaning if you're speaking of quality, maintain your quality. If you've got a fit, I'll use um, Ron White Shoes, Canadian designer, known globally. It's the quality and it's not a, it's low, it's not the lower end, it's a higher end shoe, but every, he's known for the quality. He's known for Italian leathers. He's known for, but people will always want it. And even without his retail stores being open, there's the online presence or the today's shopping choice, the television presence. But there's people are always gonna want that. The Brian Bailey's of the world. It's, it's luxury um, formal wear for women. They're gonna want them. That's a Canadian designer. His own shops are closed but he still has his online presence. He's still on television. So you're always going to be there. There's a, it's just keeping focused, keeping true to who you are, maintaining your structure, your fit and quality. You say you've been involved in the fashion industry for a long time, uh, since uh, the 1960s when you watched your mom. Um, making clothes, yeah. Making clothes, etc. How do you stay abreast of fashion? Why does fashion change so much, so often? Um, and why and how and why do you stay abreast of it all? So the, the biggest key is know the market, follow your market, do your research. Every day things are going to change. Keep your pulse on what you believe in. Um, there's some things will change. Everybody has their own personal style, obviously. Um, there's always going to be true, be true to yourself, but be true to others. Always, and if you're going to work for anybody, which I've been fortunate to work with national brands as well as private labels and, and help private designers as well, know who that consumer, what's your target customer? And then within that target customer, you have to have the breadth of assortment for that customer. So as in there's some designers that will only do size, and I'll use the ladies designers, and I won't mention names, they'll do size two to 10, and they won't go beyond that in the larger scale, because when you get into plus sizing, your patterns change, the fit changes, and it's an expense. But if you really want to be true and get the right follower, everybody has money, depending on if you're luxury or non, you want to make sure that you're, you're true to who your target customer is in the full broad scale, keeping inclusivity in mind as well. How do you, um, what, what do you think the future of Canadian fashion is? 
I think that we're, we're going to be there. We just have to be, we have to market ourselves more. We have to be proud of where we are. Um, I think the, the future of Canadian fashion is most of us will buy locally, hopefully, but then broaden it out. Let's offer the Canadian fashion further. Talk to the Consulate of Mexico. Let's talk to the UK. Let's talk to other countries. Let's try to broaden our Canadian fashion. There's a few of them that have stretched and reached out to different countries in Europe. I think we need to do more of that. And I think that's how we can get more and more recognized because we are a quality product. I used to put a, I used to put a suit on every day. I haven't Mm -hmm. put a suit on, but maybe a few times since uh, a year ago. Um, Are we going to go back to wearing suits? Are we going to go back to wearing ties? Are we going to go back to wearing, you know, formal uh, dress? I don't have the magic crystal ball like everybody else, but I think you will. I think that people are missing it. Um, Getting dressed, the, the big key, key is depending on what you're going to do and how, what you work, what field you work in, changes your personality. It makes you feel good. Getting dressed and, and designing for people, I always want them to feel good anyway. But there's a different persona. When I put on a blazer, I'm professional. You just feel I feel professional. Um, if I'm just having a casual coffee meeting or whatever, I can sit in a t-shirt, sit in a sweatshirt, put on a wool sweater, whatever. That's different. If I'm going out with a group of people for a few cocktails, you just throw on a polo shirt. But when you want to feel dressed up, you have to, again, it's the way you want to pers- uh, the, the way you portray yourself. It's it's. I think it's going to come back. I think people are going to are missing dressing up. I know I'm missing socializing itself myself. Um, but even getting dressed up for the different events, even though they'll, I think they'll never be as big and broad as they were here, they'd probably be more intimate and smaller scale. But people will miss, will want to get back into that field. I will, definitely. You mentioned uh, Claudia earlier. Uh, I uh, yeah. chatted with her once and she told me that she had like a couple hundred pairs of shoes. Yes, she um, does. What, what, what do people do during COVID-19 with their couple, couple hundred pairs of shoes? Do they wear them or do they just walk around their house in slippers? You can wear them. Okay, I don't have a couple hundred. I probably, for a man, have about 150. But it's, you have 150 pairs of shoes. I've worn them out. Same size shoes since I was a kid. I have the dress boots, dress shoes, dress sneakers, whatever. But again, I, I change. I never wear the same shoe two days in a row because it's not good for your feet nor the shoe. So they have to breathe. So I still wear shoes. I still get up every day and I'll have my coffee and that my sweats, but I still get up. I take my shower, I get dressed every day. Not formal, like depending on what I'm going to do that day, but I make sure that I put on constructed clothes every day. So You've got I mean, something around your neck. Um, are ties going to come back? Yeah, I think they will. I hope they do. I still wear my ties. <laughs> you don't think so? I, I don't do. know. I think people have enjoyed not wearing ties. Um, you know, I, I do like putting a blazer or a suit on, um, but uh, I've never understood a tie. I like a tie. Again, just the way I feel. I think I think they will come back for certain people for sure. Um, the business, the lawyers, the downtown crowd, the Bay Street. I think it'll come back once we open up again, for sure, here in Toronto. How do you uh, stay energized, enthused, interested, uh, motivated in the fashion business after being in it as long as you have? So the biggest key for me, the biggest thing is I meet new people. I'm always meeting new people, be it a student, be it the Claudia and her group. I want to be part of their all their meetings and stuff, listen, help where I can. Um I moved out of uh, the city. I moved up to Wasaga Beach last year, during, right before the first lockdown. Perfect timing. So I called it in the local. I can't get into the yard like help in City Hall and that they're closed. But the Rotary Club, I can help during the visit. I've got a meeting tonight on, with the Rotary Club. So I stay involved with different people and I'm listening. That keeps me energized. And then I see if there's something missing in the in the in the um, area or in the network or in the town or like with Sega, there's not a lot of fashion here with Sega. So as we open up, I'm going to do my best to get little local guys up here, see what we can do, go over to Collingwood. I check out all the little stores and stuff along the main streets, window shopping currently though. So I keep involved in the community. I look where there's a, a hole. I try to help and work with new people all the time. If someone was interested in getting involved in the fashion business, a student, what would your advice be to them? Go get a technology degree and get into computer science or no? Do you think there's a future for them in fashion in Canada? There's definitely a future. So the, just getting a fashion degree is not enough. You have to have a business acumen too. Like um, a lot of people don't understand just getting into the fashion industry. A lot of people think it's the fluff and the pretty and playing with clothes all day. 
if you don't know your math and you don't know how to run a business, you'll never be successful. Um, just from the math perspective, just building a pattern, you need to know numbers. Um, you need to know the yield of the fabric. Um, you need to know how to negotiate the costs. So the, the cubic meters for shipping freight, so all of the above, you need the business acumen. So I always say, make sure that you really know what you want. Um, to try to mentor or, or trying to find a mentor, be men mentored. Uh, look for somebody that you trust or somebody with patience that'll work with you. See what they do all day. If it's a designer you want to be, if it's the technical side, if it's a graphic artist you want to be, or whatever piece of the pie you want to play in, follow somebody that you know. Find network or find people like myself that can help you network. Find the right people to help train you. Make sure it's really what you want. Uh, Roger Lamaru, uh, thank you so much for joining us. If people want to follow you on social media or access your uh, consulting services, how do they do that? They, so if you look, just put me in, just um, Google my name. I usually come up one of the first for my LinkedIn. I've, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Facebook. Those are the three social medias I stay on. So they're welcome to join me anytime. It's a pleasure to uh, meet you and chat with you. Thank you so much. For sure. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure tonight. Thank you. Stay with us.